Hello everyone, my name is Danielle Merritt Sinceri, and I have some news that I hope will be helpful and exciting to many of you. We are introducing a new program for high school science in 2024-25. The new program is designed to increase flexibility for students with different local regulations and for students with different long-term goals, and to enhance our ability to deliver a high school science program that is aligned even more closely to Mason's goals for these students who are on the cusp of adulthood. Most local regulations are meant to support the next-gen science standards, but they do that in very different ways. There are some locales that require as many as six high school science credits, but allow those credits to be in just about anything. There are others that require as few as two to three, but are more specific in requiring a physical science, a life science, and an earth or environmental science. In addition, Mason believed that all students needed a comprehensive disciplinary experience in the sciences regardless of whether or not they would end up in a scientific profession. That disciplinary experience has nothing to do with academic achievement, but rather everything to do with being a responsible and literate citizen and a created being who knows the beauty and order of creation. Before we get into the new program, I want to address a concern that we've heard a lot of in the last year so that you can better understand why the new program is designed in the way that it is. The question has been asked, why are we using a textbook? Didn't Mason abhor textbooks? Now, the assumption here is that a textbook is necessarily incompatible with a living education. This is not the case. Mason herself used textbooks in high school such as Lapworth's Textbook of Geology and an introduction to the study of plants by Fritsch and Salisbury. So she clearly believed that not only were they compatible with a living education, but could better support what was needed for that education at this stage in the relationship than a more casual book. Why is that? What could they better support? Well, consider that science is intimately connected with humanity, but as a discipline, it's more like math or grammar than history or literature. The subject itself has an order that is not so chronological and that allows a building of knowledge that is inaccessible if we just dabble in interesting subtopics. Imagine if I were to tell you that my high school students were using Island Story for their history text. Most of you would probably feel like they were missing out, despite the fact that Island Story is a living book that we all love. So the question becomes, why and how are we using this particular book? How is it part of a living education? Livingness is about the interaction of the student's mind with another. So certainly the book, the voice, the passion of the author, their mastery of the subject is part of that. But in the realm of things, Part of it is also their interaction with the things themselves. So even if we have the holy grail of a book, but the student is never engaging with the things, we can't call that a living education. Part of livingness is also the grand conversation. In history and literature, many of us find it easy to allow the student to work independently on the lessons and engage them in discussion on the topics naturally and organically because we have some knowledge and enjoyment of that subject. That discussion, even if it's brief and irregular, is a vital part of the livingness of that subject. The same is true in science. So if the student never has the opportunity to engage in discussion on their science lessons, we can't call that a living education either. I'm gonna be honest with you, history and literature were never my subjects. In those subjects, I'm the one saying, I don't know how to do these things. I don't know how to engage my students with them. So depending on the books they're reading, I often have to pre-read them or do the course with them or watch a video or something so that I can have that grand conversation with them and then we both benefit. So I get it just from a different subject area. So this is a tall order that Mason gives us. Our high school students need disciplinary study for responsible citizenship and faithful stewardship, accessible resources from passionate masters, accessible opportunities to engage with the things, the grand conversation, and we need to do all of that with the flexibility for different local requirements. 
Let me first show you some of the new courses that you'll see in the program for 2024-25, and then we can talk about some of the different ways that this can look for different students. You have a new high school chemistry course. We begin this course in the historical setting with Michael Faraday's candle lectures, but firmly in the realm of the discipline rather than in history. There is a video series for these lectures, complete with all of the demonstrations, that was beautifully produced by Bill Hammock, who's an engineer, and Don DaCosta, who's a chemist. The course then mostly follows the introductory chemistry text that was co-authored by Dr. DaCosta. The voice in that text reminds me of my favorite teachers. They just did such a great job of capturing what they do in the classroom and putting it into a text. This text is available as a new hardback with really thoughtful visual formatting, as an ebook with the ability to adjust the font, to highlight, to use audio, the works in that ebook, and as an older print edition for those that want to go that route. We worked with home science tools on this course to develop an easy to use kit to do all of the labs in your new custom lab manual for this course. And you'll notice in your program that we're producing a video companion for the course as well. You have an updated high school biology course. We're using the Navare general biology text, but with a completely new set of labs and activities to accompany it with a new kit from home science tools. This text reads very nicely, it's sequenced logically, and the author takes great care to cultivate a humble and loving vision for what it means to study the work of our creator. You have a new listing for high school physics, which includes the physics course from Math Without Borders. For those who are not familiar with David Chandler at Math Without Borders, this course is a complete living lecture series it's very hands-on, and it's a great standalone high school physics course or a great foundation for a future theoretical calculus-based physics course. Your Alvieri lesson plans are there to support your pacing and accountability and some of those planning tasks to help pull everything together for those that want that additional support. You also have a new listing for advanced nature study. This is an excellent course that brings some maturity, some structure, some new challenges to an area of science that many of our students might want to take the next step into. For students who have a strong, consistent background with nature study, this course gives them just enough structure and accountability to really kick it up a notch and go deeper while still giving them lots of room to personalize their own special interests. And then you've got electives in everything from botany to geology to astronomy and microbiology, depending on the grade level and previous experience. So, how to make choices from this vast menu? Well, what we would recommend for the student who has completed Alvieri Science in grades 7 and 8, which is physical science, and when I say completed, I mean the labs as well, is that they move into the high school chemistry from there. This chemistry course blossoms really nicely from the historical context of our Form 3 science. It really only requires basic algebra in terms of math skills, and it establishes a solid foundation for biology in 10th grade. And then the student is ready for physics and whatever other electives they choose in grades 11 and 12. Whatever direction they are being called in, they are prepared for it. This example shows a student completing physics in grade 11 and nature study in grade 12, but it could be the other way around, and they could do nature study or some other elective in 11th grade and physics in 12th grade. Or another student might choose astronomy in 11th grade and microbiology in 12th grade. What about the situation where an 8th grade student was doing the level 7 Alvieri science? Well, it's fine to just bump everything up a year. So that student is doing the level 8 Alvieri science in 9th grade and then continuing on to chemistry in 10th grade. What about a situation where a student didn't do much science or did more of a topical interest-based science program and then they're coming into the Alvieri as a high schooler. That student could do physical science in ninth grade by either completing the Form 3 Alvieri science in a single year or by doing the Novare Intro Physics program with the video course and then jumping into chemistry in 10th grade. What if a student isn't far enough along in math for physical science in grade 9 or just needs a bit more flexibility for whatever reason? Well, you've got it. In this example, a student does advanced nature study in 9th, botany in 10th, physical science in 11th, and then chemistry in 12th. Or maybe they do geology in 12th. The program is your course catalog, your menu, 
and there are many different paths available that you can use to give guidance to your students. And we do plan to continue growing and developing this program in the future with both special interest and more advanced options.